so 6.4, we are going to learn about some triangle side theorems. These might be new, they might not be, but either way, we'll just go ahead and review it and discuss it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is what's called the mid-segment of a triangle. So some people will call it the midline. I always call it the mid-segment. It is a segment that joins the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle. So some of these mathematical properties are going to be true just by that definition, okay? So since um, DE is considered the mid-segment, and that's the midpoints of the two sides, that means that AD is the same length as DC, because D is the midpoint, and that E is the midpoint of CB. So EB is the same length as C. E, okay, it doesn't mean that those two sides though, like CE and CE, it does not mean CD and CE, that those two are equal to each other, all right? And so what we know is that since those are the midpoints, we know that DE is parallel to the base AB, okay? And so you'll see this little arrow that shows that they're parallel. That arrow is not always there, but that is going to be a characteristic of a mid-segment. Um, and then this is the mathematical property is that DE, which is the mid -se segment, it's half of the base length, okay, that it's parallel to. And that's it. So the mid segment theorem says the mid segment of a triangle, which joins the midpoints of the two sides of a triangle, is parallel to the third side and half the length of the third side. That is a theorem that was proven by other mathematicians. And so we're going to solve some equations based on that. So on my first example, it says find IK, and I'm going to go ahead and label that length. And notice they don't tell you anything about the mid-segment, but if I see these little marks, that means that S is the midpoint and these two are equal, so that's the midpoint. And so this line, since that's in the midpoint, it means that SR is the mid-segment. So if I want to find that length, that means that 5 was half of the base. So 5 is equal to half of ki. And so you can just think, oh, well, if that's half. That means I need to double it. So that means that ki equals 10. Now, do you need to show any work? Definitely not. Okay. If they give you a number, um, your answer can be decimals, but I expect that you can do that in your head and that's fine by me. All right. Um, on the next one, same thing. We know that these are the midpoints based on those measurements, but sometimes if you, um, there's two different ways to do this. So I'll go ahead and show both ways. I don't have a preference. And if you want to come up with the third way, that's fine too. But what I know is since this is half of X plus 29, basically what that means is that I need two of these. So you can write it out that way. Okay. So it means that two of my middle lengths has to equal my bottom length. And then you can solve that equation if you like. If you want to set it up a different way, we'll kind of do what I did on the first example. We've got our mid-segment, and then that's going to equal half of this, okay? Now, instead of thinking of it as half, you can also think of that this, um, I'll show a third way, that x plus 29, that's my base length, that's actually equal to two of these. So there's three different ways um, that you can think of this algebraically. And it doesn't matter which one you set up or how you solve it, but typically you need one of those three ways to do it. So if you, and I'll just quickly solve all of them. I would combine like terms. So I get x plus x is 2x, 19 plus 19. And then we'll go ahead and subtract 1x. So 29 equals 1x plus 38, and then subtract 38. So x equals negative 9, okay? And it doesn't say to find the length, so we're just going to act like it said find k, find x, sorry. Um, on this equation, if you had a fraction here, I wouldn't distribute the fraction. If we multiply by 2, then that means I would multiply this whole other side by 2, okay? Since this is in a parenthesis, you only have to do it once on the right side. So 2x... 19 times 2 is 38. And then since this number in front of the parentheses is gone, I don't need that parenthesis anymore. And you'll kind of notice, oh, we had that already over there. So I would solve it the same way. 
On this example, I would distribute the two. So x plus 29 is equal to two times x, two times um, 19. And then, ooh, we have that same equation again, so I would solve it all the same way, okay? So either way, that's what we can do. Now, another term that we're gonna discuss is called the median. So median is kind of like you're driving down the road, that little median in the road. It's called a median because it's in the middle of the road. So it's a segment drawn from the vertex or the corner to the midpoint of the opposite side. So since that's the midpoint, it's gonna cut both of those left and right segments into equal congruent lengths, okay? And you can draw it from any corner. So they drew it from all three. Now, if we put them all together, all of the medians of a triangle, since there's three of them, what happens is we create, see how they overlap and they intersect? They all intersect in one point P, and that's got a special name. That is called the centroid, okay? And so mathematically, somebody came, and if you go from the point, so I'll just do this one, CE. So if I look at C to P, and then I look at P to E, okay, what happens is that the centroid is actually, it's two thirds, it divides it into thirds, basically. The top part from the vertex, that's two thirds. And then the bottom part, which even looks shorter, that's one third of the entire length of CE, okay? So look at this equation, this is AP, so here's A to P, see, and that's the longer one, it's from the vertex, that's two-thirds the length of AD, okay? And same thing, B to P is two-thirds of B to F and CP. So basically, you wanna take that entire length and you wanna divide it by three. The top part will be double, the bottom part will be single, okay? So if I knew, let's say I have my centroid and I'm gonna write this, okay, so we can see a little bit better, okay, so if I knew, let's say CE, let's say CE was 15, that whole length from C to E, well, if I divide it by 3, I get 5, and so I'm going to double that to get the top portion, portion, which is 10, and I just take that single value, and that's the bottom portion, so that's what 2 thirds and 1 third is, all right? So let's go ahead and try this. Now, without the numbers, and that's how I would do it with the numbers, just so you know, is we can do some equations. So here's g to e, so I know this whole thing is 3x plus 5. And then ie is x plus 6. And so we want to find x. Well, this doesn't have to do with the centroid since we don't have um, other centroids drawn. This has to do with the median. So remember, if this goes from this vertex to the other side midpoint, it means that these two sides are equal. So if that's x plus 6, this is x plus 6. And then all together we know the total. So we've got the left plus the right equals the total length. So 3x plus 5. And then we want to solve that. So x plus x, 6 plus 6. And then we'll go ahead and subtract 2x. Yeah, sometimes I can't talk and write. 12 equals 1x plus 5. And so subtract 5. So x equals 7. And since that's all they were looking for, then we're done. Okay? So that used the median concept. On this one, we'll just label and we'll figure out what we need. So e to t, so from here to here, is 3x plus 2. em, so that's the whole thing, is 5x. Okay, so what we know is that we have that top part, which is two-thirds of the whole thing. So we know that ET 
is actually two thirds of our total EM. Okay, and I'm gonna help you solve this because since we don't have a number here, it's a little more tricky. So ET is three X plus two. We're gonna keep that two thirds, don't change it to a decimal. And then EM is five X. Now I actually don't even multiply all that out. If you want to solve an equation that has a fraction, since these are being multiplied, I can get rid of that fraction by multiplying by the bottom number, which is a three. But that does mean that I have to multiply by a three on the other side. And since there's two terms there, I have to divide by both. I'm sorry, multiply by both. Does that make sense? Because they're being added, this was being multiplied. That's the difference. So I get three times three X and then three times two. And then over here, we just have two times five X. So that's tricky. So anytime you see that fraction, multiply both sides by three. So then to get X by itself, I'll subtract nine X. So six equals one X. And that's what they were looking for. It just said, hey, find X. Okay. All right. In triangle FGH, it says that we have medians, all right? So we want to find XK, so that's the bottom portion. If we know that G to K, we know the whole thing is 13.5. So remember, if GK is 13.5, that's going to be one third. So I want to divide that by three. So 13.5 divided by three. And I got 4.5. So that means that this is 4.5. And if I double that, that's going to be the top because that's one third and the top was two thirds. So times two gives me nine for the top part. Now, they only asked for that. So XK equals 4.5. Remember, the bottom portion is one third. Okay. If you want the equations, what we know is that X k equals one third of g k. You can think of it that way. So x k equals one third of 13.5. And you can just multiply that out actually. So if you like the equations, you can set one up. If you just like to figure things out logically, you can do that strategy as well. All right, let's try the second part. So if fx so here's f to x is 10.6, and that's the top part, so that's two-thirds. What is the me me measure of xj? So what we know is that fx is equal to two-thirds, and that xj is equal to one-third. So remember, this means that I doubled something. I doubled whatever xj is. So if we take 10.6 and we divide it by 2, we get 5.3, and that's the single amount. So 5.3. All right, and then the last one, find HX, so H to X, that's our two thirds. If H to I, so the whole thing is nine. So remember, HX, is equal to two thirds of the whole thing of HI. So we know HX is equal to two thirds of HI is nine. So two thirds, two divided by three times nine is equal to six. Or remember, take that nine, which is the whole thing, divide it by three, and that's the one third. So this bottom part was three, and then we double it to get the top part, which is six. All right, so on your practice, I have a few questions. I do want you to try all of them. Try the first three questions, four, five, six, and seven, okay? So you had eight problems on six, three, and you have seven problems on six, four, okay? Let, let me know if you need help.